Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk all about orbital cellulitis. I had a good case of this a couple weeks ago and it reminded me that I haven't had a case like this in a good bit. So I thought it'd be a good time to review it. There's many different uh, differentials of infections around the eye. Um, the common one that we know well is pink eye or conjunctivitis, microbiome, bacterial. There's also um, infections of the eyelids. You can have preceptal cellulitis. You can have uh, a dacroadenitis, dacrocystitis, and I like to classify a lot of these as pre-preceptal cellulitis, but the differentials and the treatment are all different. So I wanted to do a good review of this and then mainly focus on orbital cellulitis and the dangerous reasons that we classify this as an ocular emergency. So let's get started. So like I was talking about before, there is a lot of differential diagnosis for infections in and around the eye. We can start with the least dangerous, um, the sty or something, a bump on top of the eye that looks like a sty. There's two differentials that I like to go over with this. One, if it's painful and they have a bump and the patient's really irritated when you touch it, that is a hordeolum and that is an infection of one of the ducts in your eye. And then if it's not painful and it's a bump and they're moving it around and the patient goes, it's not painful, it's just annoying that it's there. That is a blocked mebobian gland and that is called a chalazion. And then you might have infections of the eyelids. So both upper and lower eyelids or just one um, will be erythematous. There might be a little crusting, a little drainage on them. Um, and all three of these the mainstay of treatment is just warm compresses up to four times a day. A lot of times I will tag on erythromycin ointment um, to add an antimicrobial factor and a lubricating factor and prevent further infection. It's not needed. The mainstay of treatment is those warm compresses. And you really have to push the patient to do a lot of warm compresses because they're just like, oh, I did it once. Why isn't it working? Yeah, you have to do a lot. So then you can have infections of the lacrimal gland where you may tears and then the drainage factor down into the corner of the eye, the lacrimal cyst. So if it's up here, it's called dacroadenitis. If it's down here, it's called dacrocystitis. And you will have a lot of localized redness, swelling in those areas. And if you have either one of those infections, then you need to put these patients on oral antibiotics. And then a step up from that is going to be the preceptal cellulitis. So not the orbital cellulitis, the preceptal cellulitis. And this is their entire eye is going to be red. Um, there might be a little bit of edema and there might be a little bit of drainage on the skin surrounding the eye. The eye itself, the conjunctiva can be a little injected and a little erythema might have a little drainage from the eye. And again, the mainstay treatment for this is going to be oral antibiotics. And then when it gets dangerous, Dangerous is when it becomes orbital cellulitis. So this is infections behind that septum that I keep mentioning. So with this, they might have still some of the same manifestations of preceptal cellulitis, but with orbital cellulitis, you might have vision changes with the eye, anything at all, double vision, um, a little specs, anything at all. Um, so always get a visual acuity on these patients. Um, they may have some proptosis with the eye, so the eye might be coming out a little bit at you. You see this Graves disease sometimes. And then lastly, you might have pain with extraocular eye movements. So if you have any of these symptoms, and that is concerning for orbital cellulitis. So as you can see here, this is the erythema edema you might see with periorbital cellulitis and also with orbital cellulitis, but the orbital cellulitis is obviously going to have the pain with extraocular eye movements, proptosis, and any type of vision changes. Now, as you can see here, this is a good diagram of all the sinuses that surround the eye. Sinusitis is one of the most common causes of orbital cellulitis, but ethmoid sinusitis is the absolute most common cause. 
So far throughout this video, I have referred to preceptal and postceptal orbital cellulitis. So this is the septum that I am referring to. So any kind of infection that is preceptal is going to be on the outside, more along the skin, and postceptal is an infection of anything behind the septum here. So that's why it causes a little more pain with extracular eye movements. That's why the eye can pop out, and that's why you can also have vision changes. So um, if you are ever worried about orbital cellulitis, so again, those three symptoms that I like to think about are proptosis of the eye, any pain with extracular eye movements, or any visual changes at all, you are going to want to order a orbital CT of the postseptal area looking for signs of infection. My guy, my patient a couple weeks ago came in, uh, he self-diagnosed himself with conjunctivitis, pink eye, and was using at-home antibiotic drops that were left over from a previous conjunctivitis. He said it wasn't getting any better and the itching was worse and he said he thinks from the itching and the skin tears he got from it predisposed him to the infection he eventually got around the eye as well and at that point he went to an urgent care and then they called over and said hey we're sending them to us to rule out orbital cellulitis um so in the emergency department um he definitely had preceptal cellulitis it was erythematous it was a little dimitous he didn't have any proptosis he didn't have any vision changes and he didn't have any visual changes. His visual acuity is great on both sides, but uh, he did have pain with extracular eye movements, um, only with looking in the upward gaze. So it was a soft call, but we got the orbital CT. He didn't have orbital cellulitis. He just had preceptal cellulitis. We added an oral antibiotic, um, actually two of them, to his regimen and told him to continue to do eye drops to his eye because he still had conjunctivitis as well. And we sent him home and he ended up doing okay. So when it comes to the treatment of orbital cellulitis, um, again, this is an ocular emergency, so you are going to want to start treatment as soon as possible. And the treatment is IV antibiotics. So these patients need to be admitted into the hospital. And um, again, it's an ocular emergency, so you're going to want to start IV antibiotics as soon as possible in the emergency department. Most of the things that infect the eye are gram positive, so you start with IV vancomycin, and then research has shown to add another gram negative coverage, so a lot of broad spectrum coverage in treating this disease because the main complication is vision loss. So IV vancomycin, you can do plus zosin, that's what I usually do plus ampicillin, plus ceftriaxone. And if your patient is immunocompromised by any ways or they're a diabetic, consider the chance for a fungal infection, get cultures of the eye and possibly start them on amphotericin. And that's it guys, thanks for listening. I know it's been a second since we've done a YouTube video. It's been the holidays and I hope you guys have enjoyed your time off. If you're interested in any of my previous YouTube videos, the last one I did was a roundabout way to talk about D-dimers and when to order them. And then I went into specific patient populations where D-dimers are more useful and different threshold cutoffs from there. So go take a look at that. Uh, see you next week, guys.